So we're trying to basically um, take this workshop to a different kind of a different avenue, so to make it available. And then of course we'll go over to the plan. We'll be using our, our pilot plan as like the model for how we're going to do it, but we're going to relate that to you know not everybody can afford a hundred thousand dollar pilot plan, <laughs> so we'll bring it to the local level and. Uh, show people how to do that. This here is a beautiful jug of waste vegetable oil from our very own northern cafeteria. It, uh, as you can see it's dirty. Um, we have the oil layer on top and then you have um, whatever did not end up on your plate uh, at the bottom. Well the first step in the process is getting all the crud out of here whether it's uh, particulate matter or moisture. Uh, so what we're going to showcase in the workshop um, is basically what this you know unit does and kind of how this is economical compared to other aspects. You take your raw oil and you pump it up into this containing jug here. Uh, you let it flow down and the centrifuge basically spins out any of the heavier particles, heavier than oil, right? That'd be water, the batter. And then the output is clean oil, clean enough, right? But once you have the oil processed um, or what you think to be processed, there are certain measures you have to take in order to um, make the biodiesel, right? To save yourself some time later on, troubleshooting techniques. Two big things are the acid that's in the oil, which, which is the titration. Um, and then there's the water, right? Well, we have a $15,000 analyzer for water, right? Well, that's, nobody can afford a $15,000 analyzer. So, um, a very simple, um, it may be crude, but simple test that you can do that's effective is the hot pan test. Put the pan on the stove, heat it up to 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. Put your oil in there, if it pops, you know you've got too much moisture in your oil. And you need to either reprocess your waste vegetable oil or can you continue just processing it further, however you have your setup design. So you get your oil, you clean it, you titrate it, you do a water test. If it's deemed usable, um, then it's time to make biodiesel out of it. In the biodiesel process, you have three ingredients. You have your feedstock, which is your oil. You have an alcohol. Uh, it could be methanol, ethanol, isopropyl alcohol. It just so happens that uh, methanol is the cheapest and most readily available. You have um, a strong base. Um, we, we use potassium hydroxide or caustic potash. Uh, we'll discuss why we use caustic potash versus sodium hydroxide, or lye, um, and the, the pros and cons of both of them. We'll show people where to buy methanol, how much it costs, um, some of the safety precautions. Uh, many people don't think methanol is as dangerous as gasoline because they can't smell the vapors as easily, but it's very dangerous. Uh, almost you know, 95% of all biodiesel accidents, explosions happen because of methanol. One of the biggest questions is how much lye do I use? The methanol is pretty straightforward, you know, that, that is, usually doesn't change, but the lye does change based on your acid titration. So whatever result you get in your titration, we'll show you how to apply that to the recipe and how much lye you should use, um, which is probably one of the, the, the most uh, frequent questions that we receive from small producers. This is our methoxide tank. Um, we mix our methanol and catalyst in here. While that's going on, uh, we have, we'll load our reactor with our feedstock, um, and we use a, a water jack in here to heat up the, the, the feedstock to the right temperature. He took the feedstock and after the appropriate amount of time the catalyst is dissolved in the methanol and the feedstock is up to the right temperature, uh, we go ahead and mix them. So once you have your reaction for two hours or so, uh, we send it to a settling tank. We let the, let the, the glycerin biodiesel settle out and the glycerin gets pumped off and we have a crude biodiesel layer. In order to make it into purified biodiesel, we have to wash it. And then you wash it again, and wash it again to take all the contaminants out. Once we have it uh, washed, of course, it's now it's laden with moisture. In order to dry it, we heat it up, we circulate it, we apply air, and the combination of those three, the water dissipates out, and you have a nice, clean, clear biodiesel. 